Sharing things like training documents, contracts, or spreadsheet data can be hard to collaborate on in a secure way if sent as attachments via email to people you work with outside of your organization. And once those files are shared, even as Google Docs, it's hard to keep track of revoking access to them as folks no longer work with you on the same projects. This is where I recommend using a Google group and adding email addresses as members of that group. This allows you to share in a one-to-many fashion because you only add the group's email address to folders, files, or sites once. And just worry about adding people to that group instead of sharing each individual resource. And conversely, you can revoke access to all assets by removing a member from that group. Optionally, for short-term projects, you can enable time-based permissions so that docs shared with that group have an expiration date and permissions are removed after a certain date in the future, which can serve to be quite handy. You can scale this process from the comfort of one of the most familiar interfaces, a spreadsheet, and leverage features such as collaboration, tracking history changes, conditional formatting, or getting email notifications if someone adds more members to the group. Welcome to the Sheets to App Show, where we talk about how to tame these tabular beasts into productive applications. In this session, I will cover how to use an app script in a Google Sheet to automatically add members to a Google group in order to help you share documents or Google websites at scale with external vendors or customers. Note that you can make a copy of the sheet since it's linked in the description of this video. Make a note that whoever makes a copy of the sheet needs to have a manager or owner rights to the Google group you wish to add members to, since the script runs as them. Once copied, anyone on your team can use it, regardless of their level of permissions in the group. The first is to add the Google email address of the external person you wish to grant access to. Note that if they do not have a Google account, you can always create a free Gmail account to leverage this workflow. The second column is the Google group email addresses the owner of the sheet has manager privileges to. The third column called allowed is populated by you with the word yes when you want the script to add users to the Google group. This gives you the ability to control when to specifically add users to the group address. For example, Let's say you can have a calendar reminder for Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. to visit that sheet and grant access to new members in order to do this in bulk. Status has its cells auto-populated with the word newly added if the user is successfully made a member of the group and sends them an email. This email uses a Google document as a template, and you can include a summary of all the links to the resources they now have access to. Note, if you wish to have different email templates sent for different Google Groups, I recommend making more copies of the sheet for each group or adding more logic to the script. The status column could also occasionally say already in group, and that helps avoid sending an email to the user if you or someone on your team already set them up in the past. To visit the script from your sheet, click Tools Script Editor. Anytime a user edits the sheet, it runs a trigger called on edit. It specifically looks for the allowed column to be populated in order to complete the workflow's steps. At the top of the app script, you customize the subject line and the links to the Google Docs that serve as the email templates to notify users when they are added or were already added. One of my favorite things about this app is that it checks who is a member of the group thanks to the Google Groups service. And in order to use this service, you need to be working in a G Suite account since it requires enabling the admin directory API, which is already done for you in the script. And as a fun fact, many product managers at Google use a group to give users access to their beta programs because of the benefits mentioned earlier. I only tell you this since there are many creative ways to use a group in order to manage permissions and access in a scalable and secure manner. Well, hopefully this summary gave you a better idea of how to streamline access to resources with people outside of your organization. Community, if you found this episode helpful, please click like and subscribe to the channel for future episodes. Cheers.